Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, uh, I am going to speak about the encounter with Jesus makes uh, differences. I'll be. Encounter with Jesus makes differences. And that is the, that is the theme that I am going to uh, speak about uh, this morning. Let us all, I mean, prayerfully sit in the presence of God and let's uh, uh, listen to the word of God. Amen. I am reading that from the, uh, from the slide in English and someone of you can read uh, in Malayalam and uh, somebody can read it in Hindi also. Amen. Encounter with Jesus makes difference. Amen. Can you all say that? The encounter with Jesus makes difference. Amen. Somebody can read that in Malayalam. Who is ready to read that in Hindi? Okay. 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 Anyway. Grammar is wrong. Okay. So the translator is wrong. That's why. <laughs> Okay, listen to that um, a particular theme that we are going to listen from Matthew chapter 2. Okay, so from Matthew chapter 2, uh, we know many things about uh, that story and everything. And uh, I'll be speaking from this particular uh, portion, maybe chapter uh, Matthew chapter 2. And it says that encounter with Jesus makes differences in our lives. Amen. So, Eshu Christo Maito or Alakandu Mutial, Thirchi Aitum, Avekthiuda Jivatirandundagam. And we all, including our Sunday school kids, we are well familiar uh, with uh, Matthew chapter 2, right? And Matthew chapter 2 is well familiar and the story which is rare, you can see that uh, all the Sunday school kids are very well, they are knowing about that story of wise men visiting uh, uh, the baby Jesus. I mean, uh, especially on the Christmas season, we used to read that portion and we used to preach from that portion or we used to share about uh, the birth of Jesus to the other people. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, this chapter is... Uh, is uh, I mean, I personally believe that this chapter is not only for the Christmas season, but I believe that this chapter is for the people of God, those who are sitting in this season in the eternal life church of God. I mean, if you believe that. Amen. You know, some, some of the portions of the Bible, we are separately given for some of the season, right? You know, so we are saying that, okay, that portion is for that season and this portion is for this three season. Something like that we are doing, you know. So some of the portions are specially assigned for that season. But Bible is always talking to every person, those who are living in every season, every season, okay? So, this morning also, I was just thinking that when, when I was reading this portion, um, I got a special illumination uh, from this story to, to speak about how our encounter with Jesus makes a difference in our life. And we know that our first encounter with Jesus Christ be the day when we accepted Jesus as our personal savior. Something, some problem with the mic? Clear? Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. So, you know, so, uh, most of the time we are thinking that um, um, uh, we are believing that, I mean, everyone has a special day of encounter with Jesus Christ, right? You know, every, every, every person has an encounter with Jesus Christ. And uh, we, are, uh, we are saying that, okay, I mean, that was the day that uh, when uh, I was accepting Jesus as my personal savior. And that was the day, that was the first day that uh, I got the encounter with Jesus Christ. I mean, so, uh, but the, the thing is, many of the believers, many of the Christians are uh, uh, limiting their encounter with Jesus Christ. Christ the, the day of salvation or the day when they were born again or the day when they accepted Jesus as a personal savior. I mean, many of the people are just limiting their encounter with Jesus Christ. I mean, they are saying that, okay, I go and I have an encounter with Jesus Christ once and that was the day that uh, I received Jesus as my personal savior. But Bible very clearly says that when each and every moment we, we must be, I mean, refreshing our encounter with Jesus. Jesus Christ. Man, every moment of our life we should encourage ourselves and encourage other people to refresh our encounter with Jesus Christ. 
you know most of the people are satisfied and they are saying that okay i am saved and i came to the saving knowledge of jesus christ and i know jesus christ and uh, i am always a, a, a believer i am a christian and that's enough for me and i had an encounter with jesus christ and that's enough for me but bible very clearly says that each and every moment of our life we should be refreshing that encounter with jesus christ and we should keep that relationship constant relationship with jesus christ in our life hallelujah and that's what i mean we are going to i mean think about i mean uh, for, for for this message today men so uh, you know uh, the we know the, the the natural of the story that uh, of this chapter 2 matthew chapter 2 we almak ellarku ariyavana kadayana kadayalla i mean sambhavamana endana the 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 wise men they are going to meet or have an encounter with uh, jesus the baby jesus i mean so it is very very easy to understand that that story is very clear that and every one of you they know that you know uh, these wise men they were from the the eastern side of the world and they were going to meet jesus christ and they got that vision that uh, uh, the star they, they saw the star of jesus and they are going to meet uh, i mean jesus but they were not i mean uh, actually they were not knowing where to go and where to meet jesus huh? uh, it is not written there okay they they got the uh, clear confirmation that you have to go to bethlehem they didn't get that but they saw the star and they are going to meet jesus christ and to to visit jesus the baby jesus and on the way they, they, they diverted their i mean uh, the journey and they are just i mean uh, stopping at the palace of herod and when they reached to herod we know that herod was asking uh, to to these people I mean, why you are here and these people were saying we want to see the king of jews we want to see where is the king of jews and uh, we know that the story that um, um, uh, herod was uh, very much troubled and he was uh, uh, asking some questions to these people and he was uh, uh, calling he was calling uh, the the priest or a high priest or somebody or scribes or somebody and they are coming and they are searching from the scripture and they are saying that okay when jesus is to be uh, to be born in bethlehem okay and uh, uh, when the scribes and priests were saying that jesus is is supposed to be uh, in uh, i mean born in uh, in bethlehem then uh, uh, herod said that okay you go and meet him meet him and uh, and come back to this place to 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 uh, this place this palace and uh, tell him tell me that uh, then where is jesus i mean is where jesus is born I mean, and that is the history and they goes to uh, i mean they are following the star and they are going to I mean, bethlehem and reaching there and meeting uh, the baby jesus and uh, they were not coming back uh, coming back uh, uh, through the through the i mean same way but they were I mean going into the another way i mean so this is the story that we understand from that uh, i mean uh, 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 i mean a uh, story and uh, uh, one more one more one more question that i have to ask to i mean someone here maybe um Nathan, you know, how many wise men were there? How many Maggie were there? They were uh, coming to uh, visit Jesus. Three? How many Jonathan? Three? Danny? Three? Elsa? Where is Elsa? Oh. How many? Three? Is it written there? Huh? <laughs> you know actually it is not written there that there were three wise men there were three magi coming from the east uh, in that in that caravan or in that uh, i mean a group of i mean wise men they were coming uh, three people were coming uh, to meet uh, jesus but but we assume Okay, it's an assumption or we assume that there were three wise men because uh, uh, they were uh, presenting three gifts to the baby jesus right they were presenting three gifts which are those gold frankincense and myrrh okay gold frankincense and myrrh okay and think about these wise men how they are starting the journey to meet jesus okay it was not easy for them to know the way it was not easy for them to make an encounter with jesus christ it was not easy for them to reach to bethlehem 
from a far place okay so somebody was saying uh, if they are from the eastern side of the world when they would have uh, uh, traveled almost i mean 1000 okay 1500 miles no we can't believe that you know uh, i mean uh, i'm traveling maybe 1500 miles or something no but even we we should know that by seeing a star on the sky just starting the journey and they believing that the lord who told us and the lord who gave us the vision about jesus the birth of jesus will take us to that place but on the way they were diverted from their real proper journey and went to the palace of herod but i personally believe that when we are obeying the vision of god when we are submitted in the hands of god god will guide us and god will i mean I mean tell us I mean what to go what to do that is what we were i mean listening from the psalms today I mean we don't want to be worried about anything hallelujah most of the time the people are worried worried about many things when they are thinking when what shall i do tomorrow and where where shall i go tomorrow and what shall i do in the next year when so many of the people even the students they are worried about many things the people those who are doing their work they are worried about many things in the office when in the workplace but bible very clearly says that when if the lord is your shepherd hallelujah devam ninde idayanaangile I mean, in the end, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't be worried about anything because God is there to care for you. Because we have to be the Lord. We have to be the Lord. We have to be the Lord. We have to be the guidance of God. I mean, when we are submitted in the hands of God and we are ready to obey the vision of God, to obey the word of God, when God will lead you and God will guide you where you should be. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And think about these wise men. somebody is saying that this this wise men are from the eastern side of the world that means it it might be the persia or in 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 the in the present day it's it's iran okay so those people were coming from the eastern side of the world and they were gentiles and they were scholars they were astrologers and they were the kings from the persian countries okay what or it may be you know all these things are there this is the assumption and this is the view of many people that these people are from the east that's the reason they are i mean concluding that uh, these people were i mean uh, from that per- that that place or these people having uh, these kinds of scholars and they are scholars so they are astrologers or something like that you know when uh, the reason uh, you can say that uh, i mean when they saw the i mean star of jesus uh, uh, i mean uh, in the sky they started the journey right No, they know something about the astrology they know something about uh, when all those things which is happening around them and they were knowing something i mean else and even somebody was saying that these are the people these are the kings from the persian countries okay so kings and varumba rajakumar aitana avaru vannu parayumbodhekku or malayalam paattu ningada manasil orm varunnundo christmas nu paadne adu undu pinne doore ninnum ile you know that song dure dure ninnum marupuvin valigelilude oru kalitholuthu theedi moonu rajakanmarathi kettittundo so somebody was saying and somebody was writing you know when uh, bobby brother was uh, sharing about jv peter he's a good singer and he is a good song writer also you know when the people were singing or when the people were writing a song they are thinking that okay these people are the kings or these people are the wise men and you can call them as a magi okay magi is a greek word actually and uh, i mean which means the wise men okay and all these things are there but think about how these people were reaching there when and uh, uh, you have to know that you know even though we are calling these people as wise men wise men men so we used to so, sing that song in for for the for the christmas i mean so here also we sing whatever it may be you know the meaning is that uh, the people were i mean having that encounter with jesus christ and they were coming to see jesus they were coming to visit jesus i mean so you have to know one thing that you know 
in the in the biblical view even though we are calling those people when three or four i, I don't know how many were there maybe we, we believe that okay we assume that uh, three were there okay these uh, i mean three were i mean the wise men okay the the bible is calling the wise men but i believe personally believe that you and me are the wise people of this world you know that how can you say that are you a wise person are you a wise person do you have a wisdom yes why why how can you say that i'm a wise person okay it is not those who are wise men they were having the encounter with jesus christ today we are going to have the encounter with jesus christ there is a verse in 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 psalms there is a verse in psalms remember that verse who is a wise man according to bible read psalm number 14 verse 2 psalm number 14 verse 2 the lord looks down from heaven ah read Yeah the Lord looks down from heaven on the human race to see if there is one who is wise one who seeks God varana buddhimanmare hove anushikkina buddhimanmar undo enne kaanuva deyam endiyunu swargathil ninnu bhoomiyilekku nokkunu vanshaputra maadidilekku nokkunu so you and me are the wise people because we had an encounter with Jesus Christ hallelujah even today also i mean those people are not the wise people but we are the wise people because when we are sitting inside the church today we are seeking the face of god right we are seeking the face of god and we are asking oh lord i need to see your face of father this morning hallelujah we are worshiping god at the same time we are seeking the the, the face of god today in the worship hallelujah and uh, when you read matthew chapter 2 verse 2 i mean you will see the what is the purpose of their coming what is the purpose of the the, the coming or the visiting of 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 that i mean i mean uh, 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 wise men read that verse maybe uh, chapter 2 verse 2 now it is better to give the mic to somebody who is reading because uh, in in zoom also we are um, having the the meeting so when somebody is reading read through i mean uh, for uh, sorry um, uh, mic yeah any any one person can read where is he who have been born king of the jews mm. for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him amen hallelujah so why they came to this place why they came to this place first of all you can say that to have an encounter with jesus christ or to see or visit jesus baby jesus but at the same time the main purpose is to worship him their main purpose is to worship him children of god brothers and sisters we are coming to the presence of god we are coming to the church we are attending in the fellowship meetings I mean, not only to receive the blessings from god but to worship him to give something to god hallelujah hallelujah why we are here in the presence of god why we are here in this church sitting here i mean in order to give something to god to give something to god to worship him to adore him hallelujah and giving praises unto the name of the lord that's the reason we are here in the presence of god amen and we know that actually what is worship okay worship is submission then adoration and homage okay in verse 11 you can read there after coming into the house they saw the child with mary his mother and they fell to the ground and worshiped him then opening their treasures hmm, they per- they presented to him gifts of gold and incense and myrrh then so the the meaning of that there is a, there is a clear picture of the worship in this scenario uh, think about that you know how they were worshiping god how they were worshiping jesus okay somebody was saying you know, we should not uh, uh, worship the baby jesus right no the pentecostals are saying we should not worship the baby jesus 
ഇസ് എ ട്രൂ ഇസ് എ ട്രൂ ബേബി ജീസസ് ഉണ്ണിയേശുവിനെ ആരാധിക്കാൻ പാടുണ്ടോ ഉണ്ണിയേശുവിനെ ആരാധിക്കാൻ പാടുണ്ടോ ഹലോ നിങ്ങളും കൂടെ അല്ലേ ഉണ്ണിയാണേലും പെരുന്നാണേലും യേശു യേശു ഓക്കേ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഡേ ഹി വാസ് എ ബേബി ജീസസ് that day he was a baby jesus okay but he grew up and he became an even you know we will we'll come to that point now jesus is always jesus and he is eternal always man jesus is worthy to be called as god and his divinity shows that even though the wise men were worshiping jesus in 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 his childhood and while he was a child while he was a baby you know we should understand that jesus is eternal for everyone every for everyone at every time I mean, so let us worship god jesus when at any time at in in any age okay so, so we we may saying that okay uh, jesus was there on the earth uh, for 33 and a half years okay so we cannot calculate that uh, 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 um, no, now i mean how he is old can you calculate can you calculate what is the age of jesus now we know everything about the uh, everything about the 33 and a half years uh, i mean uh, the the ministry of jesus or work of jesus 2055 <laughs> ദൈവത്തിന്റെ വാദനത്തിൽ ഒരു വാക്യം ഉണ്ടെന്ന് അറിയാമോ പുരാതനായ ദൈവം ഓക്കെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ദ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ ഫോർ ദി എർത്ത് ഐ മീൻ ജീസസ് വാസ് ദേർ വയൽ ഐ മീൻ ഗാഡ് വാസ് ഐ മീൻ മേക്കിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റിംഗ് ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ജീസസ് ഇറ്റേണൽ Jesus is eternal hallelujah that Jesus is eternal and we are worshiping i mean the, the eternal god and we are going to the I mean, main points now you know let's think about what did they do after the encounter with Jesus or what differences after meeting Jesus hmm? what did they do after meeting Jesus or after the encounter of with Jesus Christ what happened to those people endakkana avarku sambhavichathu യേശുക്രിസ്തുവിനെ കണ്ടു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ യേശുവിനെ കണ്ടു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ അവർക്ക് എന്തൊക്കെ സംഭവിച്ചു ഫസ്റ്റ് തിങ് ഫസ്റ്റ് തിങ് റീഡ് മാത്യു ചാപ്റ്റർ ടു വേഴ്സ് ഇലവൻ മാത്യു ചാപ്റ്റർ ടു വേഴ്സ് ഇലവൻ ആൻഡ് വെൻ ദേ ഹാഡ് കം ഇൻ ടു ദ ഹൗസ് ദേ സോ ദ യങ് ചൈൽഡ് വിത്ത് മേരി ഹിസ് മദർ ആൻഡ് ഫെൽ ഡൗൺ ആൻഡ് വർഷിപ് ഹിം ആൻഡ് വെൻ ഹി ഹാഡ് ഓപ്പൺ Uh, enough, enough. Thank you, Jaleen. See, what is that? No, they had a, they had a clear environmental understanding. What do you mean by that? They had a clear environmental understanding about anything, about everything. That means, you know, they were having that discerning spirit to know, to know who is who. And, you know, immediately after... reaching there immediately after i mean entering into the house they recognized the baby jesus and his mother mary and they did not worship mary rather worshiped jesus men make sure that you are worshiping the exact person the thing is you know they were the wise men were having a clear environmental understanding or recognition you know they were saying that okay we are seeing many things in the house of jesus or joseph of mary when joseph joseph maybe there it is not written that joseph is there but i believe that joseph was there and mary is there his mother is there and uh, uh, and uh, the, the other properties are there in the house and some other i mean uh, uh, things are there you know many things are there but these people were having that understanding that we are supposed to watch only jesus not any other things amen hallelujah hallelujah you know everybody don't know le eh mattulla onnum aaradhikkan paadilla yesuvine maatrame aaradhikkan paadullo ennu avarku ariyamayirunno this is the real discerning i mean spirit hallelujah even though there were many other things and uh, joseph was there mary was there and all other things are there but these people were knowing that we are supposed to worship the person who is worthy to be i mean worshiped hallelujah and they were knowing something from chapter 2 verse 6 you will understand that 
chapter 2 verse 6 it says that and you Bethlehem land of Judah are by no means least among the leaders of Judah for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel at the same time the same verse is written in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 also can you read that verse maybe Micah chapter 5 verse 2 Micah chapter 5 verse 2 <clears throat> But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, do you are no among the thousands of Judah, yet out, out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Amen. Amen. That, that particular verse, Micah chapter 5 verse 2 shows that Jesus, who is Jesus? Jesus is the eternal God, right? Jesus is the eternal God and he was there in the beginning from the past eternity until the, I mean, eternity which is going to come. Amen. So Jesus is there and they were knowing that already it is written in the prophetical books about Jesus that Jesus is the eternal God and they were worshipping only the eternal God, Jesus Christ. Eternal God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the thing that I would like to share with you from this point is, we should have a discerning spirit of everything which is happening around us. Man, let us uh, let us have that. We, we must learn how to discern other people, and we must learn how to speak to I mean each person, and and let us learn how to respect other people. Let's learn how to I mean respond to the people or reply to the people, and we must learn how to deal with other people. And remember that they had a clear environmental understanding. Amen. So whenever we are coming for the worship service or for the fellowship meeting or when you are at home, I mean, when you are traveling, I mean, remember, you must have the discerning spirit. Hallelujah. Discerning other people. I mean, discerning the, I mean, discerning everything which is happening around us. I mean, most of the time, the believers are failing in many areas because they doesn't have the discerning spirit. Amen. Because of that, many of the people are failing in their Christian life. Amen? So this is what we have to understand. Do not put anything instead of God. And do not give priority for anything in our life than God. Hmm? You, if you are giving preference for any other things than God, than God, that is an idol worship. That's an idol worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to come back to the word of God. Let's come back to the presence of God. And let's ask, I mean, for, I mean, pardon and forgiveness in the presence of God. And say, oh Lord, I mean, I will be worshipping the exact person. I'm not ready to worship any other people. You are coming here not to worship a pastor. You are coming here not to worship a believer. You are coming here not to worship a statue which is here. I mean, you are not coming here to, to worship any idol or something but we are worshipping the living God living God who is eternal hallelujah and that is the first thing that 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 difference uh, I mean came to it came to the life of wise men when they had an encounter with Jesus Christ and secondly the second thing is they fell to the ground hmm? Matthew chapter 2 verse 11 the same verse says that they fell to the ground that means in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament Bow down or fell to the ground is a symbol of I mean, self-surrender, complete submission and humility. I mean, self-surrender, complete submission and humility. If somebody is bowed down or if somebody is fell to the ground, that means, that means they are humbling themselves and they are submitting themselves and the complete submission is happening there. I mean, even, you know, there are many people, I mean, when they saw the presence of God, when they heard the, the voice of God, I mean, and when they had an encounter with Jesus Christ, when they fell down, I mean, they fell down, they bowed down in the presence of God. 
I mean, there are many people like Abraham, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Peter, Paul, and John in the book of Revelation. You can see that. Apostle John was falling, falling down and he was bowing down and putting all the other, I mean, uh, I mean uh, other positions uh, away from him and he was worshipping God. Hallelujah. What is worship? What is worship? I mean, when you are worshipping God, you are remembering that you are nothing. Hallelujah. You know, in, uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17, you will see that when John fell at the feet of Jesus, like a dead man, when he saw the glorified Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why? Why? I mean, John was falling down at the feet of Jesus Christ, uh, I mean, just like a dead man. To show that, to say that, when I am nothing in front of Jesus. I am nothing in front of Jesus. How can you say that? And today, I mean, can you say that? I am nothing in front of Jesus. Hallelujah. Humbling ourselves in the presence of God. I mean, having that, I mean, complete submission in the, in the, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I was just thinking about uh, this verse like this, you know. If, if, if somebody is having more knowledge about Jesus, okay, more, more knowledge about Jesus, that person will be the humblest person in the world. That is what I understand from the Bible. You know? If you know about Jesus more and more, you will be so humble. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. Man. So this will happen when you are knowing about Jesus very well. Hallelujah. Others, man, if you are having some, some knowledge about Jesus, the, the head mind or the, the head knowledge or something, and that will, that will encourage you to have the pride. To have the pride. And you will not be humble in the presence of God. But when we know about Jesus, because Jesus was the best example for the humbleness, the humility. Right? Now, these people, when they were seeing Jesus, when they were having the encounter with Jesus Christ, they humbled themselves and fell down and fell to the ground. They started to worship God. Hallelujah. Even in Revelation chapter 4, verse uh, chapters 4 and 5, I mean, you can see that the four living creatures and also 24 elders, I mean, they were laying down their crowns and falling down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What they were doing? They were laying down their crowns. Hallelujah. This is the real worship. My dear brothers and sisters. Many times we are not understanding what is the real worship. Hallelujah. We are thinking that okay. We are singing a song. That is the worship. Hallelujah. We are believing that okay. Doing a prayer meeting. Or attending in a prayer meeting. That is the worship. No. Worship is the complete submission in the hands of God. When we are in the presence of God, you know, these 24 elders and four creatures, they were I mean, laying down their I mean, crowns in the, on, on the floor and they are saying that, Oh Lord, we have nothing. We have nothing to boast about ourselves. I mean, when we see the glory for Jesus Christ, when we see the glory for Jesus Christ, how can you stand there? How can you say, I'm mean, stand there when you are falling down in the presence of God and you're saying, Oh Lord Jesus Christ, you alone is worthy to be called to be praised, to be praised. Vidum Bodhana, number humble Agum Bodhana, number Thurthon, the USA humble Agano, Thurthon and Karthan, many Greek and the Aitrum. Third point, third point, the same verse we are reading that they were worshipping Jesus. Okay, how we are supposed to worship God? How we are supposed to worship God? In John chapter, 12, chapter 4, verse 24, it says that you are supposed to worship God in truth and spirit. Amen. So I know that. You are bodily sitting here and uh, your, your, your physical body is here. But at the same time, sometimes we are only worshipping with our body or mouth. Okay, But the, the worship should come from our heart. I mean, that's the meaning that. I mean, if you are true and if you have truth in your life and if you are doing everything according to the plan of God, will of God and the word of God, then you will be sitting in the presence of God and we will be saying that, okay, oh Lord, I am coming to your presence of God to worship you in truth and spirit. Hallelujah. And when our spirit is connected with the, the spirit of God, 
when a spirit is connected with us with, with the spirit of god sometimes we may not be remembering the lyrics on the on the screen hallelujah sometimes we forget that uh, when what are the lyrics that it, which is written on the screen but we will be worshiping in spirit hallelujah and i know that there are many people experiencing that kind of worship in your life hallelujah when you are worshiping i mean when your spirit is connected with the spirit of god when I mean, you are worshiping in spirit hallelujah amen hallelujah and the fourth thing is that we can see there they opened their treasures mm -hmm. hallelujah the same words eh? they opened their treasures that means their preparation for worship that means they were not making something after reaching there after seeing jesus but that rather they prepared everything from their home and now they are opening their treasures what is needed for the worship if you see jesus and if you have an encounter with jesus very clearly i mean you are not preparing yourself after coming into the church this is very important thing that you have to, we have to remember you know after coming there are many people i mean coming to the church and after coming there and uh, preparing themselves oh lord i'm coming to your presence oh god help me oh god i mean cleanse me oh god why can't you pray that same prayer in home it is it is good that we are doing that after coming to the church also we should do that but at the same time my question is why can do, do do that preparation at home itself no? most of the time what is happening the people are doing something else in the home and simply they are coming to the church simply it's a sunday that okay we we, we must go to the go to the church and sitting there and simply preparing themselves from there but the true thing is prepare yourself at home these people wise men they were bringing the treasure from from their home hallelujah nammada veetil alle nammada or preparation undagandade alle i mean ivada vannine shesham alla nammal oringi ondi ready agandade kartavane aaradhikkan veetil vechu thane prarthichu oringanam hallelujah etra peranga orungunnunde eh aaradhane kke povane sunday aayidondang povalla veetil nu oringi veranam endo oringa nalla dress ittondu veranam nalla pinne eh nammal nammada heart ne endiyanam nammada andaranga thendiyanam oriki 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 aaradhane kke veranam hallelujah when you come prepared from home itself and you will be opening your treasure and you will be presenting something to the lord hallelujah and in same verse we read that they presented to him the gifts they presented to him the gift men that means the costly and precious three items of that day gold frankincense and myrrh Okay? that means we are supposed to present our worship by knowing him and his greatness and his holiness <laughs> hallelujah when you have an encounter with jesus christ you know we know that we had an encounter with jesus christ when we were i mean uh, getting salvation okay that is the that's the first thing but every moment every day we should keep up that and every day we should uh, i mean refresh that encounter with jesus christ then what is happening whenever we are sitting in the presence of god remember who jesus is men remember who jesus is know who jesus is and how great is our god and how holy is our god that's what we read uh, in that particular verse 11 that he they were bringing gold and gold is symbolizing i mean uh, uh, symbolizes kingship of jesus christ men gold is symbolizing the kingship of jesus christ that means they were knowing that jesus is the promise to king and even we know that the wise men when they were coming to herod's palace when they were asking where is the king of jews but what was the answer of answer of answer of herod huh? what was their question hey where is the king of jews where is the king of jews and because they were knowing that jesus is the king jesus is the king that's the reason they were bringing the gold you know in the in the eastern eastern area when the people were bringing gold only for the uh, as as a presentation for the kings for the kings that's the reason that these people also were bringing the gold to uh, to to present to jesus i mean because they were knowing that jesus is the king but herod was i mean replying in another way and he was asking to the scribes and the priests you go and search and get something from the scripture i mean where is the messiah is the, supposed to be born herod was seeing messiah but they were asking for a king to be born where is the king to be born i mean so we will understand that who is our god who is our jesus 
he is a king he is a king that's the reason they were presenting gold in front of jesus secondly they 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 they, they brought the incense or the frankincense which symbolizes the priesthood of jesus christ hallelujah hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says that jesus is our high priest jesus is our high priest who is our jesus he is our king he is our high priest and thirdly they were presenting the mirror which symbolizes the prophethood of jesus christ the prophethood of jesus christ means jesus is the prophet when yesu arana yesu raja vaana yesu maha purohitanaana yesu arana pravachaganaana hallelujah idu tirichariju kaniyumba namakku engane devathe aaradhikkan irikkan pattum then how can you say that jesus was a prophet john chapter 4 verse 17 and 18 we know that men 17 and 18 what is that men uh, uh, the samaritan woman the samaritan woman is having a conversation with jesus christ le eh samaria sri yesu noda samsarikya okay there are many things that they were talking especially in the verses 17 and 18 we read there that when they were i mean i mean uh, uh, he was i mean she was asking uh, uh, yeah jesus was asking a little water to jesus and jesus was uh, asking something else to i mean this samaritan woman and at last we read there that i mean this i mean woman was asked to bring her husband jesus said go and bring your husband or call your husband then what did he, she said what did he said eh huh? i have no husband then what did jesus said you are right you had five husbands before and still now you have so six total six and that also is not your ninakku anju varthakkamare undarunu ippo orthan undallo adu ninde kettiyon alle undu so that means you know jesus was prophesying and jesus was revealing the secret secret life of that that woman hallelujah who is our jesus he is a prophet he is a prophet hallelujah he can tell you i mean what is happening in your life I mean, through the word of god when the when the pastors or the when the brothers are preaching the word of god I mean god is revealing something about your secret life and correct that and come to the presence of god and ask pardon in the presence of god hallelujah and that's what we are seeing that they were bringing the gold I mean frankincense and myrrh in the presence of god and presenting that and they are saying that we worship the real god we worship the eternal god we worship the king god we worship the prophet god and we worship the priest god hallelujah men so let me let me tell you one more thing that many times in the presence of god even though we are sitting here many times we are careless we are carelessly sitting in the presence of god i mean many times we are irreverent in the presence of god hmm? no you know it's, it's not only the, the the presence of god is don't believe that the presence of god only inside the church everywhere there is presence of god you have to remember that i mean even at least when you are coming to the church when you are coming to the church remember that you must respect the god's presence i mean you must respect the i mean god's presence and you must you must i mean give honor and glory to the name of god and if we are having a, an encounter with jesus christ hallelujah we cannot stay still there we will be worshiping god without the compulsion of other people without the force of other people can you worship god now can you worship god now there is no particular time for worshiping god hallelujah when you see and when you have an encounter with jesus christ i mean today we are going to worship god hallelujah shall we all stand together in the presence of god hallelujah 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 my dear my dear brothers and sisters my kids i mean children well uh, let me let me remind you one thing hallelujah when you remember i mean you have the presence of god when you remember your god jesus is the king when you remember i mean you have a jesus king i mean hallelujah i mean praise the lord uh, uh, sitting um uh, you, you, when you remember that jesus is there and he is the king and he is the he is the priest he is the high priest and he is the he is the prophet i mean we will be worshiping god we cannot stand alone there hallelujah we will see the presence of god hallelujah